Hello everyone and welcome back to Eat Sleep Reef. In today's video, this is one that I am beyond excited to bring to you uh, just because it's been in the works for at least four months already, believe it or not. So this is what I'm going to be calling one of the final legs as far as experimental for the JBJ45. So for you guys that aren't aware, um, I've you know mentioned it a few times, but I've really been using my JBJ as an experimental tank uh, to this point. Um, you know, if I were to crash the tank or lose all the corals, it would suck. But there's just so much stuff I've been experiment or experimenting with. It's just a risk I'm willing to take uh, to bring you guys more knowledge, so you guys don't have to make the mistakes I made. So in other words, I'm pretty much risking my tank. Uh, you know, doing all these changes, experimenting with all this stuff so I can bring you guys more knowledge uh, so you don't have to experiment it for yourself. So one of the last parts to this tank is a calcium reactor. So most people would never even dare to consider putting a calcium reactor in a 45 gallon tank um, just because, you know, you want to go the doser route, uh, so on and so forth, which the doser route is great, but it has its flaws. Um, a calcium reactor for you guys, that, I'm sure we've all seen those stunning big tanks that we're just blown away by. 99% of the time, those tanks have calcium reactors, uh, not only because they're cheap to maintain in the long run, uh, but they put back trace elements, major and minor elements. Not to mention a calcium reactor is by far uh, the most stable way to keep parameters in your reef tank. I'll get in a little bit later uh, to explain why. So. This is pretty much everything really needed to get started with the calcium reactor. In this video series, I'm going to want to walk you guys through and show you guys that a calcium reactor is not as intimidating as a lot of us make it. Uh, believe it or not, it's actually us, you know, listeners, watchers, viewers that make it really difficult. It really isn't. I know I used to be afraid of them, um, but you don't have to be. Hopefully this video brings you a little bit more knowledge in a calcium reactor and uh, you decide to possibly venture out in your own route doing a calcium reactor like myself So we're gonna be doing real quick here is giving a rundown of everything um, Hopefully it's not like a rant. Um, I hope it's not. I hope you guys get some knowledge out of it. So um, Starting out one of the first things you're gonna need in a calcium reactor um, Or before we get started, what is a calcium reactor? So a calcium reactor is really any reactor um, obviously they're specific for calcium uh, reactors, but essentially it's a regular reactor. So what you do, you put media in it, and this media is actually crushed, uh, crushed coral. So this was coral that was alive, at one point it died, and now it's here dead, crushed, and this is the organic form. What you do, you put that into the reactor, you fill it, not all the way, because there's a pH probe um, that sits in here. Uh, but you fill it to the top and what happens is there's water circulating from your reef tank into the reactor and back out into the tank so where the reaction happens is when co2 is pumped into this chamber when co2 is pumped what it's going to do it's going to drop the ph make the water more acidic as it makes it more acidic this media will start to melt about 6.5 pH. So it's a very low pH, it's a pH you would never run your reef tank at. Um, but when this media melts, everything this coral had in the skeleton when it was alive to, uh, that it used to thrive and to grow gets released back into the, into the water. So you probably can see where I'm going with it. So the calcium, the alkalinity gets released back into the water not to mention the trace elements that we're always chasing. You know, everybody's trying to find a way um, to add them. Me personally, I use Red Sea Coral Colors, A, B, C, and D. But let's face it, guys, dosing four different elements just for trace kind of tends to get, you know, a little bit difficult. Luckily, I have it on a doser. But I think the biggest selling point that got me on a calcium reactor, it puts it back into the water column the way the coral consumed it. So let me explain that. It puts it back in equal parts. So it's very difficult to overdose any of them because they're all being put back in equal parts, uh, which is amazing. And since the coral consumed it, it puts it back in the same ratio, uh, 
uh, which means your new corals in the tank are going to consume it in the same ratio uh, that this coral and all these corals consumed it at one point. Hopefully I didn't lose you guys there. Um, another nice thing about a calcium reactor, generally speaking, you only need to test alkalinity. Why? Because again, it puts it, it puts all the rest of the elements back in equal parts. Um, so that, that that's a really cool thing. Uh, once you get it dialed in, you're really only testing alkalinity um, because calcium, strontium, bor all the other trace elements are going to be put in equal parts as they're being consumed by the corals, which is great. That's a few less things to be tested. Um, but of course, you do want to kind of still be testing just to monitor it uh, specifically in the beginning. One thing that is missing in here is magnesium. So I don't know if you guys heard when I mentioned melt, it only melts calcium and alkalinity at the core consumed. The magnesium does not get put back into the water. Reborn, two little fishy cells, what they call remag. Um, the reason I don't have it here, it's out of stock from the place I was going to get it. So I got to wait about another two weeks for it to come. It's on back order. Um, but remag, I forget the exact uh, media it's made out of. They're little pebbles. You put just a little bit. It's only 10% of this total volume. You put 10% of it in there and it melts it. And that's how magnesium is added back into the tank. And again, in equal parts, which is beautiful. Another big advantage to a calcium reactor uh, that's nearly impossible to achieve with the doser or manual dosing is this. The, the elements are being dosed every single time second 24 hours a day seven days a week obviously if you do manual dosing you'll only do one to two doses a day if you're like me and you have it on a doser you do four doses a day i mean even on if you want to do the craziest doser setup you can do a dose every hour but a calcium reactor doses every single second as the water is cons are constantly circulating through this chamber from your uh, main display so ultimately at the end of the day guys in the ocean these corals don't have dosers. They are, the, the elements that are being consumed are available in the water column 24-7. So you kind of see how going this route, you really start to replicate what you see in the ocean. Um, and this is why you hear so many people saying, as soon as I added a calcium reactor, my corals took off. So obviously we're going to be uh, going down that route and see how that goes. Um, a drawback, because you guys are probably saying, wait, if calcium reactors are so great, why isn't everybody using them? Two things. One is price. Um, you know, most people I speak to about calcium reactors, they complain about the price and the fact that they're complicated, or they think they, they're complicated. But price is a main factor. But one thing I want to ask you that you're saying it's about price. You may think spending six hundred to a thousand dollars is a lot of money, right? But yet you're perfectly fine going out buying corals, you know, five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars in corals, and having them die over time because your parameters are fluctuating. I just don't see the correlation how most people are perfectly fine going out and dumping money over time. Why not spend the money, get the ultimate stability, you know, you can buy any coral and no longer be worried about it dying. Of course, I'm not saying if you get this, you're gonna have 100% success, but this is one of the most important factors that we chase in a reef tank as far as stability. Now, another thing again with complicated, I'm going to be covering that as you guys can see. I mean, it may look complicated guys, but it's really not. Um, and what, what was the other factor? I think I forgot it was complicated. Um, oh yes. The last one. So you, for you guys that were paying attention, you heard that the pH drops in this chamber to 6.5 ish, right? So you're probably thinking, wait, if it drops that low, are you telling me that what's what's being dosed in my tank is going to be a, about a 6.5 pH? And you're right. It's going to be a little bit higher than 6.5 by the time it makes it out. Um, but you are going to be uh, essentially dipping in low pH. So that can have a counter effect on your reef tank, um, obviously lowering the pH. That is why I got this right here. So. Uh, Avast Marine was great enough to send me um, this reactor for you guys. Obviously, I'm going to have to convert it to RO. They send me the kit uh, to do that. But anyways, um, they provided this. If you guys haven't checked them out, please go check them out. The reactors, the skin. I mean, they got tons of stuff on the website. I'm going to I'm going to have a link in the description. But anyways, uh, this is a second chamber. 
So I'm gonna have two chambers in this calcium reactor. Realistically speaking, you only need one. You can perfectly get away with one. The reason I'm doing two is because um, when you introduce two reactors, obviously this one's also gonna have media, it allows more contact time through here. So when the liquid comes out of here, typically it would go in the tank and it'd be a pretty low pH. It's gonna go back into here. It's gonna come all the way up and all the skeleton that's in here is gonna start consuming more of the CO2, thus upping the pH. So by the time it makes it out of here, the pH isn't as low as it was in this reactor. And thus that's one way you can counter um, the low pH. I mean, there's other ways you can do it, um, but that's one of the ways I'm gonna be doing it here. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna give you guys a quick rundown. I know these videos are gonna be pretty long, so I'm gonna have to break them up. Um, what we're gonna do now is qu just very quickly give you guys a rundown of what's what and how kind of they correlate and work together. So starting off here, this is a CO2 tank. This one here is a 2.5 gallon. Generally speaking, you'll see guys do five to 10 gallon um, uh, CO2 tanks. My tank's really small, it's a 45 gallon. This will probably easily last me a year. Um, so I really saw, saw no need to you know do a bigger one. Obviously down the road, if I want to, I can. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna need a tank. This is a tank that is gonna house your CO2. You're gonna need a regulator for the, sorry, you're gonna need a regulator for the CO2. So this allows you to fine tune um, the CO2 coming in here. That's gonna be how you control the pH. Because if the pH is too low, this stuff will just melt and it'll turn into a sludge. If it's too high, it'll, it, won't, it won't melt, period, right? That, like it is in our tank. If I put this in a tank, it's not gonna melt. So this allows you to control um, the output of the CO2 coming into this reactor. Now, for you guys that do research, you're probably gonna see the CO2 regulator. It's an electric version or electronic version of this. It's about 300 bucks. The reason I saw no need to do that is because I'm gonna be using a pH controller, uh, which I'm gonna cover why it kind of doesn't make sense to use. It just, in my opinion, I think it was just essentially wasting money. Um, so we covered the tank, we covered the regulator for the CO2. Next, obviously we're gonna cover is the reactors. In my case, two. If you don't have two, it's just gonna be one reactor, uh, but in my case, two. So this is where you're gonna put the media. Uh, I'm using Reborn Media, I've heard great stuff about them, as well as the Remag that I don't have here again because it's on back order. The Remag is just magnesium. So what you do, you get the Reborn Media, you fill it up till about here. Um, the only reason you don't fill it up to the very top is if you pay close attention, this is where this is a pH holder. So this here, that brings us to this guy, and also that you would also fill this one too uh, with, with uh, with uh, media as well, um, if you are running dual chamber. But this here is a pH controller. Of course, if you've got a fancy Apex, you don't need this or any other controller, GHL, there's plenty of them. You don't need this. In my case, I don't have a P, uh, controller, so I needed a pH controller. So this is where this guy and this guy work together with a tank. So this is where I'm gonna tell you why I saw it was a waste of money to get the carbon doser, okay? So this here is a controller for pH. In other words, you put whatever number you want it to hold as far as the pH. And I'm gonna elaborate a little bit more. So in essence, you can open this valve all the way if you want. Generally, without this, you would obviously overdose CO2, thus turning this into sludge. But what this is gonna do when the pH re reaches a lower level in here, it shuts off the solenoid. By shutting off the solenoid, no more CO2 is being injected until the the uh, the CO2 rises, or sorry, the pH rises. Thus, this guy kicks on and tells this one to start pumping CO2 in here. So you see, really, this guy's really like a fail safe. Ultimately, I'm gonna want to dial this in to the point where this isn't shutting on and off. This is just gonna become a fail safe. Um, but you really see how they're gonna really make it easy because you dial in whatever number you want to hold. It holds that pH for you, and it's very easy to tune. One of the last parts uh, to a calcium reactor is how you're gonna get water from your tank into the reactor and obviously back out. A lot of people will do maxi jets and you just get like a pinch valve. The only problem with that is pinch valves aren't very accurate. 
Um, maxi jets will turn to clog up over time as they get build up. As that happens, it's gonna decrease your dosing um, liquid into the tank. Thus, it's gonna offset your number. So every so often you're gonna have to come back and adjust it. So what I went to not have to deal with any of that, I got a, the brand new Kimura Peristaltic Pump. So this here is pretty much as accurate as you can get to um, a pump to feed a reactor. Everybody, if you do any research, you'll find this is the route everybody's going. The only drawback with this, it's pretty expensive. It's about 250 bucks versus a maxi jet that's like 20, 30 bucks. But in the long run, you're gonna thank yourself here. Why? Because it has a little digital gauge. You can fine tune how many milliliters you want dosed um, per hour. Um, of course, this pump runs 24 seven. It never stops. That's what a peristaltic pump is. Um, so you can't use any doser. Any doser wouldn't handle this work. Um, so you want to at least go with the peristaltic route. And remember guys, if you go cheap at the beginning, you're going to regret it down the road. If you're like me, do what I did, save your money, purchase the stuff, um, over time, but go with good stuff. So later you don't have to be dealing with, um, issues. So guys, I think I talked enough. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't bore you guys. Hopefully I kind of got you guys in the right direction of where we're going to be taking this. The next video we're going to see is getting this stuff all together, getting it set up in the tank. It's going to be a first for me, so I'm very happy to show you guys. I want to give a big shout out guys to Rico's Reef Tank here on YouTube. Um, he kind of, if you guys know, he's the reef, one of the reef gods, um, an amazing guy, very humble. He's always at almost every event. But he really got me hooked on to calcium reactors. If we've all seen his tank, his SPS tank was absolutely stunning. Um, even the new tank he, he's getting going, he's running calcium reactors. So I want to thank him for helping me out, getting me in the right direction. And guys, I'm so excited to get this going. I thank you guys very much for watching. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of questions. So please leave them down in the comment box below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Happy reefing.